Marco, Alolan Ninetales, and Gastrodon. Matthew running the Garchomp, Gyarados, Tapu Fini, uh, Kartana, Alolan Muck, and the Marowak. Yeah. So, again, I think the which Gyarados is more effective is going to be one of the is the and most key thing in this game. Who especially are the better support Pokemon for that Gyarados. Right, especially looking at Kyle's roster, which is much more built around the Gyarados than uh, Matthew's. I think he's going to need to be successful with that Gyarados. You know, speaking of Alolan Ninetales, Utah's cold. Yeah, it's snowing today. It's snowing. Uh, kind of like if this Lola Nine Tails hits the field, there's going to be hail. Uh, or, yep, there it is. The hail is brought. Len, do you feel that chill? I do. I feel the chill in the air. Yep. Oh, boy. All right, so Gyarados and Nine Tails are the leads that Kyle decides to go with. Kartana and Tapu Fini are the Pokemon that uh, Matthew decides to best combat. Uh, well, yeah, these leads, yeah. It's interesting. So Kyle still hasn't changed anything, still leading his Nine Tails and Gyarados. But Matthew's changed everything leading Cortana and uh, Tapu Fini. Uh, Cortana, I'm not sure, something we ever saw him bring uh, yesterday. Uh, I think he brought it a couple times, but, you know, he. I think he now realizes that Alolan Ninetales is key to Kyle's matchup on this team. So, you know, I'm going to straight up bring the Cortana and start dealing with this uh, Alolan Ninetales a little bit better. Yeah, uh, wouldn't be surprised if the Ninetales has a Focus Sash, and so can't be taken off the field quite so easily. Would still get its Aurora Veil up, and that would buy a turn for Gyarados. If Cartana goes too quickly at Nine Tails, that's the uh, trade-off you take. Yep. Gyarados now going to switch out. Not going to want to stay in. Uh, going to go straight into Celesteel to be able to deal with this Cartana on the other side of the field, over on Kyle's side. Uh, Nine Tails not going to go for an Aurora just yet. Going to go straight for a, a freeze strike onto that top of Phoenix. Super effective damage as Cartana goes for a smart strike. Now going to target down this Alola Nine Tails. Is it going to carry a Focus Sash? It is going to carry Focus Sash to kind of allow it to set up a Aurora well, well, we'll see. Is this Moonblast going to connect on this little Nine Tails? Nope. Going to target down the Celesteel. Uh, smart switch right there from Kyle to take the Moonblast a little bit better. And this actually gives a little Nine Tails one more chance to go for a Aurora Veil. Yeah, Aurora Veil or the second Freeze Dry. Maybe try to pick up the two at KO on Tapu Fini, which would be so useful. I'm not sure Matthew would actually let that happen, but maybe worth a shot. Interesting, you see Gyarados leave the field there, even though it wasn't significantly threatened by these Pokemon, especially after the Intimidate on Kartana. But wasn't in a good position to do much damage either. Uh, both these Pokemon resist Waterfall, resist that uh, Hydro Vortex. And so getting it off the field, saving Intimidate for later, and hoping to bring it back in when it can do more damage, maybe against that Marowak. A little bit better of a matchup. Uh, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right, Len. Dude, it's so cold that I, I can't even say my words properly. <laughs> If well, only, if only blame Nine Tails for that. If only this was Kanto Nine Tails, uh, yeah, bringing the sunlight, the warm California sunlight that we're so used to. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd expect to see Aurora Veil go up this turn. Uh, Kyle has got to see that, even though the freeze dry could be very useful, it's kind of a missed opportunity to not take the Aurora Veil since there's nothing that Matthew can do to stop it. Time was running pretty close there. Matt gonna re retreat the Cartana, gonna go into Marowak. Uh, Okay, all right, well, I guess it deals, yeah, it will take the flamethrower a lot easier from the uh, from the Celesteela that it's probably going to use. Uh, Blizzard from the Alolan Ninetales is not going to go for a uh, Aurora Veil, just going to go ahead and sacrifice. Uh, maybe realize that taking time to set up Aurora Veil right now isn't the best. As it gets a critical hit on Ninetales, not going to matter too much. Uh, chipping away at that Celesteela that actually kind of proved problematic uh, in one of the games yesterday, if you remember that one. Yeah. Uh, Celesteel goes for the heavy slam, picks up the KO. All the picks up the KO on top of Fini, and the Beast Boost is going to boost the special defense by one stage. Yeah, so yeah, Celesteel was definitely a problem for Matthew. Uh, got set up too much with Leech Seed. Uh, he ended up revealing the Parish Song and the Taunt as options to deal with it. Uh, they weren't enough in the end, but two good ways to handle the Leech Seed and stalling out of the Celesteel on Kyle's side. The Blizzard's kind of interesting. Decided that Blizzard plus Heavy Slam was an easy way to get the KO on uh, Tapu Fini while also picking up damage on whatever came into the slot uh, that was Cartana previously. If it had stayed Cartana, it would have been really good damage and ended up being Marowak for pretty minimal damage. And doesn't take the Flamethrower towards Cartana, which would have ended up being a very pathetic Flamethrower onto that bulky Marowak. Gyarados switches in, and this this is actually, I mean, Marowak is heavily threatened by that Gastron, but at the same time, that Gyarados can kind of start shutting down that Celesteel, not only with the Intimidate, but with the Taunt. Yeah, with the Taunt, and we know that the Cartana is still in the back for Matthew, and we saw in the first game of their match yesterday that 
Gastrodon simply took the Leaf Blade and was KO'd, and so maybe it doesn't have the option to protect, which could make it very vulnerable over the rest of this game until Kyle's able to deal with that Cartana. Yeah. And, you know, at the same time, this this Gastrodon doesn't mind the board position right now as long as Kyle can actually figure out a way to deal with that Cartana in the back. Uh, Celestial going to switch out right here, going to preserve it to face off against that Cartana later on. Uh, Gyarados going to come in, going to go for an Intimidate here on to the Alola Marowak and the Gyarados on Matthew's side, dropping their attack stat by one stage, reducing their damage output. As Gyarados goes for a taunt right here, going to prevent Kyle's Gyarados from being able to set up, but at the same time targeting it down because that Celestial was there. Uh, Gastrodon now goes for a Skull, gonna hit this Alolan Marowak here for super effective damage, but that's gonna go ahead and activate, what, what is this, what is this, the Figgy Berry? The Pinch Berry, 50% recovery right here. Oh yeah, alright, well Marowak back to full health again, gonna go for a Flare Blitz here, gonna hit that Gyarados slot most likely, uh, what, which was a Celesteela, but you know, good switch right there from Kyle. Yeah, very good switch, because Matthew ended up going all in on attacking that slot, both the Taunt and the Flare Blitz. And so Gyarados comes in very nicely, can't Dragon Dance anymore because of that taunt, but comes in relatively undamaged and gets the Intimidate. You actually can't even go heavy on the offense with that uh, Gyarados because your own on the side. Yeah, that's 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 kind of a interesting moving piece thing. Like you have to switch out that Gastrodon right now. I'm not sure you do. I think Gastrodon is pretty comfortable here. Switching it out means you're gonna have later in the game when it might be up against Cartana, and it can still go for a Skull that should be a KO on Marowak based on the damage we saw. Oh, that's true, turn. too. That's true, too. And yeah. so maybe using Gyarados to attack the other Gyarados or simply switching it back out like he's doing. Yep. Uh, Celestial is going to come back in. Uh, if Matt goes for a Flare Blitz, then that'd be a good uh, call. But instead, Marowak going to switch out, going to go into Kartana here. And now this Gastron is uh, heavily threatened. It will be taking a Skull, most likely, though, as Gyarados on Matt's side now. Going to go for a Dragon Dance. Going to start setting up. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Matt probably pumped a lot of b bulk into that Gyarados and just using uh, Dragon Dance to be able to make it even better. Yeah, in situations where it really can't do much damage, what's on the field, have a way to move that damage kind of into future turns by Dragon Dancing, also getting some speed, because we've seen Taunt protect Dragon Dance and Waterfall on this Gyarados, and so we know it doesn't have any coverage move and is not going to sweep in many games because of that. All right, Celesteel, uh, going to get a little bit of health back. Uh, the hail should actually be ending pretty soon. Uh, I've lost track of the number of turns, but... You know, uh, this Gastron, heavily threatened. Yeah, uh, heavily, heavily threatened, but Gyarados would be a great switch in here, even though Leaf Blade is neutral, getting another set of Intimidates, undoing the Dragon Dance that just happened, and weakening that Cartana. The Celesteela isn't very threatened. Uh, Marowak's going to need to deal with that for uh, Matthew. Uh, he can taunt it again to keep it from Leech Seeding, but right now we'd probably rather Flamethrower Cartana anyway, yeah. and so you're not going to get much benefit from that. And you can't Waterfall it. You can't even Walterium Z. Oh, yeah, no, you can't because I think the Gyarados might be faster right now. That's yeah. unfortunate. That, that's that's strange board position for this game. Uh, Marowak has to come in, cannot keep that Kartana out on the field uh, as we do see a Walterium Z activate here. Yeah, I'd be expecting the Gastron to switch right. there. I think Matthew was predicting a switch, expected to. Uh, Kyle to not be willing to take the Leaf Blade with his Gastrodon, and instead the Hydro Vortex is right into the Storm Drain. Yep, there you go. Gonna boost the special attack by one stage as Celseal goes for a flamethrower. Does preserve the Cortana for a little bit later. Uh, yeah, that's that, you know, trying to make a prediction there. Uh, Gastrodon goes for a Scald here, gonna hit the Marowak and be able to pick up the KO. So, uh, Kyle, kind of winning that turn pretty much. Yeah, things are looking pretty dicey for Matthew. He's running out of ways to handle Cortana. Uh, used up the Z move now, won't be able to uh, Hydro Vortex again, even though that one did no damage. Doesn't have the Flare Blitz option anymore. Can continue to taunt to keep Celesteela from recovering, but he's going to need a lot of turns to actually do the damage to KO. Uh, meanwhile, that uh, Gastrodon and the Gyarados in the back can... The Gyarados can Intimidate, weaken that damage even more against Celesteela, and the Gastrodon can keep going for Scalds, which would eventually get burns and weaken the damage even more. And build up the dam uh, damage over time, uh, eventually win this game. Yep, and you know, one of the issues... Uh with Z moves like Hydro Vortex, uh, I don't think Inferno Overdrive gets affected by, it, but Gigavolt Havoc, you know, having immunities to those Z moves, you know, that's always nice. Like Gastrodon having that, it has immunities to two Gigavolt Havoc and the, uh, well, we just saw it, the Hydro Vortex. So uh, Matthew again gonna go for another waterfall into the Gastrodon as, you know, 
Cartana now has to go for a Night Slash. Not going to be doing much damage to that Celesteela. Now Celesteela smacks it with a Flamethrower, and that is enough to pick up the KO there. Yeah, not many options for Matthew that turn. Predicts the switch again because he need, would need, have needed it to switch to have much chance in this game. Doesn't go for the Leaf Blade because he knows he's going down to Flamethrower at the end of the turn and so needs to at least try to get rid of Celesteela. Yep, and that Ice Beam brings Gyarados down to 50% of its hit points, and, uh, well, it's three on one. That Gyarados, I don't think it has anything to touch that Gastrodon. No, I don't think it does. Nope. And I think with all the Storm Drain boosts that Gastrodon's gotten, those Ice Beams are going to be big damage. Uh, Leech Seed probably coming out this turn. You could taunt to stop it, but... Yep, uh, Matthew's probably. gonna go ahead and forfeit, unless, you know, maybe Kyle misclicked. I mean, we do see that on stream uh, every once in a while. So Matthew does forfeit this match and takes, uh, well, sorry, Kyle takes game one. Yeah, Kyle takes a really well-played game one. We, we never saw the Gastronon work much in the match yesterday. Came only to game one and was immediately KO'd without <laughs> doing anything. Total reversal in this game where it is the most important Pokemon throughout that game. Yeah, and, you know, Matthew had to figure out a way to deal with that Gastronon in order to kind of open up options for that Gyarados to start sweeping. But, you know, I think Kyle just protected it so well and, you know, maybe leaving it in was a very risky play, but Matthew kind of... Matthew, I think he was thinking in his head, he's not going to give it to me. Yeah, he's not. He's, there's no way he just gives me Gastrodon for free and ended up being the game-winning play to tr offer it for free. Another thing that you pointed out I think is interesting too, that once the... Uh, Gyarados Dragon Dance and was faster than his own Kartana, his options were reduced yeah. significantly. He could no longer Leaf Blade for KO and then go for a Waterfall on Celesteel on the same turn, or Hydro Vortex on the same turn. So I think that actually hurt him uh, over the course of the, the game. Gotta pick wisely when you start dancing. You can't just dance all the time, Worm. Yeah, it needs the attack boost, though, to deal with Celesteela. It does. Celesteela, it but does. <laughs> uh, but even then, I mean, you, you know the set on Celesteela, right? You know it's Heavy Slam, Flamethrower, not gonna be able to damage you uh, with its attacking moves. The only issue is, of course, the Leaf Seed that can you know slowly add on. All right, so getting into game two here between Kyle Hudson and Matthew Greaves. Uh, Gyarados and Ninetale leads for Kyle. Muck and Kartana are the leads that Matthew decides to go for, changing up just a little bit more. Yeah, Kyle con staying consistent. Ninetale's Gyarados every game. Matthew's trying another new thing. Uh, brings the Muck this game. We saw the Muck do, was pretty effective in the match yesterday, but wasn't brought to game one. Uh, Matthew maybe identifying that as something that could improve and bring it onto the field immediately. Gets intimidated, but is still a threat to Ninetales, especially with Cortana also there. Ninetales going to switch out, not going to want to get KO'd just yet, uh, saving it for later. Uh, actually, Celesteel is a very good switch because I can take whatever Monk and Cortana can. Uh, does get threatened to get knocked off, but I think a Poison Jab might be headed that, there anyways. Uh, Gyarados is going to now use his turn to set up a Dragon Dance here. Uh, going to boost its attack and speed by one stage, going to set it up to be able to start uh, going on the offensive and start sweeping. Muck with the curse, going to slow itself down, bulk itself up, and get ready to knock some things off, like your socks. Yeah, I think that was a good play. Uh, the Celesteel is too good of a switch in to risk actually trying to Poison Jab and Smart Strike. And so t going with a Smart Strike, because Kyle showed last game he was willing to take it in order to get one attack off with his Focus Sash. Um, but instead, Celesteela comes in, takes this Mars Strike very easily, and M Muck gets the setup. But because of the Intimidate, the dr Dragon Dance on Gar from Gyarados is much more threatening than the Curse on Muck that so far just improved its ability to deal with Gyarados. It's kind of like matching, sort of. Muck does win the offensive trade at that point. Uh, but, yeah. Cartana going to switch out. Not going to want to stay in and take another Flamethrower. Uh, probably saving it just in case there's that Gastron in the back. Uh, going to go into Gyarados here. Going to make Muck a little bit more able to deal with the opposing Gyarados on Kyle's side. As Gyarados now going to go for another Dragon Dance. Two stages of increased speed, one stage of increased attack. And Muck, I think... I think it... I mean, you can knock off the Celesteel. That's still a good trade. Uh, getting rid of those leftovers is nice as Muck goes for a Poison Jab, though. Going to hit this Gyarados. All right, now we're going to start seeing uh, Matthew remove... Ooh, a critical hit. Uh, yeah, Matt's pretty much just trying to remove the offensive threat. Yeah, I think that's the right move. Gyarados getting the second Dragon Dance. Uh, you've got to start getting, doing damage to it. You can't just keep allowing it to Dragon Dance while Muck curses, especially since Muck is Leech Seeded and won't really want to spend the entire game on the field with Leech, with seed, leech yeah. seed. And so not some, uh, an opportunity to build up his several curses and try to win using that. So instead, get big damage with the uh, attack boost that made up for the Intimidate and uh, the crit helps even more, and so that damage is very significant onto Gyarados, leaving it with very low health. 
Yeah. Uh, I think one thing that this monk needs to do before it leaves the field and or gets knocked out, uh, actually more so getting knocked out, is you, you kind of want it to be able to knock off that Celesteela, get rid of that leftovers recovery, you know, slow it down just a little bit. Uh, obviously, Matt has other options to deal with it, but I think one of the things that Muck really wants to do right now is knock it off. But, of course, that KO on that Gyarados also seems pretty nice. Yeah, you know, looking to, towards the end of the game, you know that Celesteela can be something that's very difficult to deal with, and so getting the uh, knockoff is important, but you can't lose to Gyarados. Gyarados getting too many Dragon Dances in the meantime. All right, so now Gyarados over on Kyle's side, going to go ahead and activate the Waterium Z. Going to go for a Hydro Vortex. Going to uh, target down this Alolan Muck. Muck, it's it's damaged, but it does have one curse uh, at one stage of increased attack. Muck hangs on and is going to go ahead and activate its Aguav Berry here and heal back to 50% as Gyarados goes for a taunt here. Going to shut down this Celesteela and prevent it from being able to set up another Leaf Seed. Yep, there you go. Can't even use Leaf Seed as Muck goes for a knockoff here. Gonna connect onto that Gyarados. It is enough to pick up the KO. Uh, yeah, safe. Just maybe if something comes in, knock off their item as well. Yeah, you know that knockoff's a KO, and so might as well aim for the switch. Also, pretty unlikely to switch a dra a Gyarados this Dragon Dance twice, but yeah. opportunity. The missed Hydro Vortex KO there, I think, is very big. Muck's gonna be useful over the rest of this game now. It's still above 50% health before this Leech Seed. Well, yeah, now it's gonna drop to under that. Uh, you know, one of the when I first saw Alolan Muck on stream, I thought it was Power of Alchemy, but then, you know, Gluttony plus that berry is just so good. Yeah, I mean, over the course of the season, we've seen those berries become more and more popular. People realize how powerful 50% recovery is, and especially when you have Gluttony and can activate it at decent health already, go almost back to full health in some situations. It's just so powerful. And Kyle gonna switch in the Gastrodon here, gonna pretty much shut down the Scarecrow. So uh, Kyle's gonna have to protect this Gastrodon. I think. Yeah, Kyle needs to protect this Gastrodon, but not at the risk of leaving it as one of his last couple Pokemon when Cartana hits the field. But we've already seen Cartana this game, so we know it's in the back. And if all you protect is Gastrodon, at some point, you're going to run into that Cartana. And like we said, we don't think it has protect. So if you lose one more Pokemon, it'll have no way off the field, no way to protect, and just be KO'd. Mm -hmm. So I think that makes the Celesteela the more important Pokemon, because it's more likely to actually survive the entire game and win at the end. And Having it taunted is not very good, but it does have Leech Seed going now. Wouldn't be surprised if he undoes the Intimidate and taunt with a switch at some point. Gyarados switching out. Going to go into Alolan Marowak here. Uh, Alolan Marowak, uh, strange Pokemon. We saw it with the Figgy Berry just a bit earlier. Going to take this Flamethrower pretty well. Uh, not going to do much damage at all. As Gastron goes for a Clear Smog. Okay, all right. Uh, that's an interesting tech move. Going to reset the stat boost of that Muck. Uh, and I guess the nerf I, it's speed drop um muck goes for a knockoff we're gonna go ahead and reveal gastron's moringa berry do you remember what the moringa berry does that is a special defense boost when hit with a special move <laughs> yes kind of like a seed but you got to get hit first yeah i think the clear smog is interesting there you reveal it when maybe you didn't need to uh, all it does because muck had been intimidated away from the attack boost from curse was remove the speed drop and the uh defense boost and removing the speed drop is actually significant here because I think it will make Gastrodon slower than Muck. Yeah. Uh, we saw the flamethrower towards what was a Gyarados and then became a Marowak, clearly looking for Cartana to come into that slot. Uh, taunted, Heavy Slam isn't too big of a threat to Muck. Might as well just throw something out and see if it sticks. And it didn't here, but it could have and would have been very significant in this game because it, if Cartana switches into a flamethrower like that, that, suddenly Gastrodon looks a lot safer. These are really good adjustments by Matthew. Uh, just turn around from game one. Or he just straight up got walled by that Gastrodon. Uh, a lot more options for him. I think Muck is it's, it's, it's a key player. You know, that's how Vina kind of got KO'd right off the bat in turn one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Muck doesn't have much more usefulness in it. Already used its berry and it's such low health, but he switches out and saves it. Uh, gonna go into Gyarados here. Gonna go for another Intimidate onto the Celesteela here. Uh, gonna weaken its heavy slams just a little bit more. Uh, Gyarados, of course. Uh, Probably planning to taunt that that uh, Celesteela pretty fast. Um, I think the taunt might almost be ending soon, so doesn't want to allow Celesteela like even one turn. Oh, the flamethrower in that Cartana slot there. Uh, no, right, Cartana hangs on, but that might be close to hail. Uh, unless Gastron even double taps with the Scald here. Double taps with the Scald, so Kyle picks up the Cartana. Yeah, that's a really good double target of Scald and Flamethrower. Would have been big damage to Marowak if it stayed in, and is the way more significant KO on Cartana because he tried that again. Two turns in a row, he Flamethrowered that slot uh, just looking for a Cartana switch. Interesting that 
even after showing in the previous turn he was willing to do that, Matthew still tried it and was punished heavily for it. I'm not sure really how he handles Gastrodon now. Uh, Mach's going to be his best option because it should be faster. Uh, based on the moveset we've seen from Marowak, we know it doesn't have Shadow Bone, and so it doesn't offer much damage. Based on the moveset we've seen from Gyarados, we see it has no way to touch Gastrodon. Gastrodon's problematic. Gastron is very problematic. Celesteel is probably faster than Muck and can KO from the low, very low health it's at. So is gonna, so are other things in the back room. Uh, Matthew Kyle. now going to go for a Dragon Dance on the Gyarados here. Going to boost its stats. Not going for the Taunt. Uh, maybe expecting Celesteel to predict that Taunt. Uh, going to set up a Leech Seed here on this Marowak. But, the, oh, Gastron going to go for a recover instead. Using this turn as to heal back up just a little bit more. Uh, that's an interesting move. Uh, well, I guess not interesting, but it's a, it's a thing, right? Moringa Berry pretty much gives you an Assault Vest and you can still use non-attacking moves. Right, and recovering means that even one Muck Poison Jab is pretty insignificant. Uh, uh, Matthew throwing the Poison Jab out, or the Parish Song out, because it pr probably is his only way to KO Gastrodon at this point. He's got to force some switches here. But uh, with yeah. the third Pokemon, uh, Parish Song's not going to do much. Uh, I, that's why I think he Dragon Danced with Gyarados and allowed the Leech Seed, because he's got to build up some offense with Gyarados, hoping to force Gastrodon out. Hydro yeah, Vortex something for a KO in order to only leave two Pokemon on Kyle's field, then Parish Song a second time, hoping to actually win with it. This Parish Song is just to undo Storm Drain at some point. He He's going to have to predict when that Gastron is going to go out. And exactly. Go that's for that, that Hydro Vortex the same turn, then. That's what I was going to say next, is that you are only going to lose one turn of Storm Drain. Gastron will switch out and switch right back in the next turn. And if you don't Hydro Vortex on the turn it switches out, you won't ever get an opportunity to. All right, Celesteel switches out, and Ninetales going to come back in. The Focus Ash is still intact. Uh, going to bring the Hail back, and do a little bit of residual chip damage here onto the guest, uh, onto pretty much every Pokemon on the field. Uh, Marowak now going to protect, not going to want to take damage and get KO just yet, saving that Parish Song option for later on. Gyarados now goes for a Taunt, going to hit that Ninetales. No Aurora Veil for you, uh, but we have actually already seen that Ninetales has a uh, Freeze Dry, which you have to respect as a Gyarados. You do, absolutely. Um, and means you need to Hydro Vortex more quickly because of that. You can't sit on the field taunt again because you uh, could get uh, freeze dried. You can protect and hope the Gastron switches out the next turn, but that's pretty much your only option. Then you need to Flare Blitz and Hydro Vortex the Celesteel switching in in order to get the KO because either one on their own, based on the bulk we've seen from Gyarados and the lack of Thick Club on Marowak, is not going to be a KO. So you're going to need to land both onto uh, Celesteel as it switches in to the Gastrodon slot and not lose Marowak in the process. This is going to be a big this ask. Is, this is this is a uh, this is tough. This is a tough call right here. You got to predict when that's going to come out. All right, so Gyarados protects here. So Gastron either gets knocked out or uh, oh, Marowak can't go for a double protect here. Uh, we do see the. We do see the uh, Nine Tails go for that freeze dry, and Gastron gets to go for a skull here on that Marowak. Marowak does not hang on, so there goes that option. Yeah. Uh, there, the double protect was pretty much necessary. It, by leaving Gastron in for this turn, which became predictable because of it, you force the double protect. You can't switch Muck into that slot because it would be KO'd, leave you also with only two Pokemon, you which means Parish Song is yeah. not a win condition anymore. So the double protect became absolutely necessary. Now you maybe can get the KO on Celesteela as it switches in, but you won't actually ever have a way to KO Gastrodon. Yeah, it's... Uh, Matt's back against the wall, like, really against the wall, like... Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, I think it might be over. When, when Cortana went down, I think he was immediately went to very, very few ways to win. And I'm actually impressed by the one he found. That was one double protect away from winning. Winning. Or, yeah, cause, or opening up doors, opening up the door. Right? Yeah, the I mean, he, you still have to manage to stall out that Parish Song, but there wasn't, Ninetales wasn't going to be able to KO Marowak, and so you were going to get the opportunity. All right, and there you have it. Matthew Reeves forfeits that match. Kyle in command. He was in the driver's seat for most of the game because of that Gastronon. Uh, Cartana just got KO'd s so fast both times. Um, again, one of the key plays of that match, definitely in game one, was when Gastron didn't switch. Yeah. Gastron just decided to stay in. Yeah, the key play in game one was when Gastron just stayed in. The key play in game two was when Cartana walked into the flamethrower. <laughs> it's interesting, with how slow Matthew plays, it's constant switching, you can afford to spend turns flamethrowing things that probably aren't going to do any damage because you only need one big move to break open the team. And that's what he landed. He was content with Celesteela not doing much. But it was already intimidated, so Heavy Slam wasn't going to be worth damage. It was taunted, so there was nothing he could do with Leech Seed. And he didn't need to get it off the field because it wasn't under threat. And so just throwing flamethrowers 
trying to keep Cortana from coming in and breaking the defense he had, ended up winning in the game. Well played by Kyle. But you also had to give props to Matthew for finding that one out in that second game. That was actually a very interesting out. Uh, I probably would have, I mean, once that Cartana got KO'd, I would have just been like, oh, well, all right. Yeah, like, it was my turn to run. Uh, but, I mean, that was an interesting out, right? You know, he he's a very methodical player. He thinks about everything. He's, he, he, he's, his Marowak is Figgy Berry. <laughs> what? But, yeah, well played by both players. You know, Kyle Hudson moves on to the top four where he awaits the winner of uh, Riley and Patrick. So uh, congratulations to Kyle. Congratulations to Matthew as well for making it all the way to the top cut. Uh, you know, it's, it's a tough matchup. Kyle played it extremely well. Uh, you know, both players did have all night to go back through their notes, kind of make the adjustments that they needed to. Kyle just came out on top again. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, though. Kyle is the one who didn't make big adjustments, still kept leading Gast uh, Gyarados uh, Ninetales. Matthew made the adjustments, stopped leading his uh, Marowak, which had been kind of handling Gyarados decently because it was able to Will-O-Wisp on the first turn, never let it in this match and didn't have nearly as much luck as in uh, yesterday's match. Yeah. Guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And when we return more action from Salt Lake City, we're going to be broadcasting uh, Ragav versus Cameron Jihadi. Also, uh, if you guys want nonstop continuous Pokemon action, we are also streaming the midseason showdown that is currently happening at this venue as well. Uh, that is going to be over on twitch.tv slash Pokemon, or sorry, twitch.tv slash Utah Pokemon VGC. Go give those guys a look if you guys want more Pokemon action. Uh, you know, this is a, it's another full day of Pokemon here. Yeah. 